Hey guys, welcome to David Audio Production. Thank you for taking the time to check out my video today. Uh, EQs are the single most powerful tool that we as mixing engineers have. Uh, there is a literally millions of options out there for EQs. And in this video today, I'm just going to show you some of my favorite free EQs that I, I still use even to this day. Uh, these are really good options if you're ready to just now graduate from your stock e from your stock plugins, and these are also really good options for people who already have a selection of premium plugins available that will give you some interesting flavors and alternatives to the stuff you already have, and will give you a chance to check out some interesting developers that you may not have considered in the past. Before we get started, I really just want to give you a really quick overview of how I select uh, free plugins. Uh, there are literally hundreds of free plugins available out there, and some of them are older, no longer supported by the developers, or obsolete uh, technology like 32-bit. So for me, the three single most important factors for me to select a free plugin at this point in time are one. It has to be 64-bit. There are a lot of 32-bit plugins still available out there that you can run in your DAW with uh, VST bridges, and most of your DAWs have to have that built right into them. But I prefer 64-bit because I prefer not having the extra processing power being given to just run the plugin. Uh, second, they have to be available from uh, reputable developers. Uh, there is a lot of abandoned plugins out there that are no longer being supported by their developer and I prefer to have the developer still supporting them so that when they make changes to operating systems you know that you're being updated and, and you're not going to have any functional problems using them. And third, it must be available for download from a reputable website, either a website that's, uh, that is being maintained by the developer or from a website that checks over the plugins and makes sure that they are still being supported by their developer. If you do those three things, you're going to be pretty much guaranteed of getting uh, stable, usable, that won't cause you any problems in your DAW. Tokyo Dawn's Nova is a parallel dynamic equalizer, digital equalizer that is pretty much a Swiss Army knife type of a of an equalizer that you can use on any track in any mix. Uh, is a pretty damn good substitute for your stock EQ uh, and has a lot of features in it that are available only in much more expensive paid EQs. Uh, the only limiting factor on this one is the fact that it's only four bands plus a high pass and low pass filter. Uh, but in all honesty, if you're, you have tracks that need more than four moves plus a high pass and a low pass filter, you've got bigger problems than an EQ is going to fix. Uh, first and most importantly, it is resizable. If you grab that little thing in the corner there, you can pull that up to any size that you want it on your screen. Uh, it has a, uh, it has a, a spectrum analyzer that you can put on the input, the output, or the side chain. Uh, four bands can be turned on and off here. It has the usual uh, controls for Q factor, frequency, and gain. You can also select if you want a shelf or a bell curve. Uh, the high pass and the low pass are selectable slope from 6 dB to 12 24 all the way up to 72 dB, pretty much a brick wall. Uh, the each band is also has a solo function that you can listen in on each band, and it has a dynamic equalizer in it. So by pressing the threshold button, you activate the dynamic section, which turns this into basically a multi-band compressor, DS, or however we want to use it. Uh, by turning the ratio down below one, it's an expander. So in other words, any frequency that you're that you're using the expand the expander on will and will it will increase the tone. Or if you turn it up above one, it turns into a compressor. Setting your threshold set sets to where it's going to start affecting the signal, and the cue narrows or wides the band of what is being affected by the dynamic section as well. 
you have a dry mix, output gain, EQ gain, you bypass here, you can check your gain, your gain reduction delta in your in your dynamic section with that button. Uh, this definitely is a very good equalizer and for free, it's ridiculously good and it's something that you should have pretty much in every collection. The Slick EQ, also from Tokyo Dawn, was made in uh, collaboration with a variety of sound. Uh, this is a flavoring EQ that when you pair it with the Nova, gives you a very powerful one-two punch of EQ options. And again, as with the Nova, this can be used pretty much anywhere in a mix from individual tracks up to your mix bus. Uh, this is a three-band parametric EQ with a high pass that goes from 10 hertz to 350 hertz or you can just be turned off uh, the low and the high frequency sections can be shifted from shelf to bell curve and have a adjustable frequency in gain and then in the mid the mid section is a bell curve and has a section here where you can switch it between four flavors of sound from British, Ger uh, British, German, Soviet, or American, and also has a saturation function that is a very uh, subtle, but can be you know you can switch to different site types of saturation as well. The flavoring section with the different uh, console emulations affects the curve shape and is extremely subtle but is noticeable if you shift through them and can be used to assign similar tracks a slightly different flavor to separate them out. Uh, it's a very powerful EQ. It also has an auto gain and is another one that, especially for free, you're getting a lot.
pull textile EQs are a very popular option. And there are a few very good ones available for free out there. Uh, an interesting one that's been that was recently uh, released from Keeve Audio is the Warmy EQP1, which gives you a few extra frequencies on the low on the low frequency section and the high frequency section. But other than that, gives you the standard pull tech boost and cut controls, the usual bandwidth sweep, and the upper end boost and alternate cut frequencies. Uh, they also have oversampling in, included in that, as well as a mix control, uh, and is a pretty interesting option for a pull textile EQ. Uh, Acoustica Audio's Coffee Pun is not necessarily designed off of a pull textile EQ, but it works in similar ways. Uh, where they have a low cut frequency, you can differentiate the low and the high cut frequency boosts, and the upper end is just a gain only. Uh, but it's also a pretty good one. It also has a switchable preamp circuit in there to add a little uh, harmonic distortion to it. But for Poltex dial EQs, my personal favorite is the Sun EQ from Sonimus. Now, this is a Poltex dial EQ with some extra features as well. Uh, input and output knobs to the left. It has a high pass and low pass, high pass and low pass filter. Uh, it also has a sweepable mid section, which is very nice. It also has a drive section, and this wow is a linear phase type of a thing that's basically only recommended to be used on full mixes because it can add some phase issues in on individual tracks, especially if you use more than one instance. Uh, the low and the high, the low section has your basic pull tech boost and attenuation, tw uh, 20, 30, 60, 100 hertz. The high end is gain only. It does not have the uh, high end cut, but it does have a low pass filter, which basically will give you more or less the same effect. That gives you a, a 6, 8, 10, or 16 hertz, kilohertz uh, frequency boost. And then in the mid gain, it's a switchable high and low e high low Q that goes from 150 hertz up to 4,000 hertz with 12 dB of, of gain or cut. Uh, this is in a very very good EQ usable on a lot of different items uh, and is a very good option for a pull textile EQ. There are several decent options out there for low end uh, work. Uh, the Boz Digital Labs Bark of Dog is one of my personal favorites. It's a low end frequency booster. It has three modes, classic mode, which is just a straight shelf boost. The passive mode is the pull tech push pull style. And then the combo kind of combines the two of them together. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you have to be a little careful using because if you push it too hard, you're going to overload your low end. But if you're looking for a little extra bottom end boost, a uh, plug-in like this is incredibly useful. The BX subfilter from Plugin Alliance is another one that, is, that can do some interesting things in the low end. And the Titanium Bastard from uh, Acoustica is essentially the low end part of a Poltec style emulation that does the same basic boost and attenuation, just the bottom end of a Poltec style EQ 20, 30, 60, or 100 hertz. Any one of these three or all the all three of these are a very handy item to have available to you, especially when you're needing to boost up your low end and beef up the bottom end of your mixes.
The Left of Kuss by LKJB is a take on the Mog EQ uh, that is very popular for adding a lot of sub low ends or very high end what they call the air frequency, which Left of Kuss is referring to as the high boost. Uh, the Leptikus adds a couple interesting options as far as like having a mastering option that instead of the knobs being 100% variable, if you turn on the mastering, it, it clicks in on each individual setting and it makes uh, recall a little bit easier to work with. It also has an analog function that adds just a little bit of a change to the curve shapes. It also gives you a keep gain, which is an auto gain feature that the Mag EQ would be nice if it came with that. Uh, the airband is selectable as a high shelf boost from anywhere from 2K, 2.5K all the way up to 40K. And even though 40K is above the range of human hearing, it definitely has an effect on the high end that is audible. Uh, this is a very decent emulation of the Mog EQ. Uh, it can get a little harsh if you push it a little hard. But again, as far as like adding high end is concerned or extreme low end, this is a very useful plugin to have available to you. If all you're looking to do is add high-end presence and sheen to a, a track, a good option, a good alternate option for the Lufticus is the Slate Digital Fresh Air, uh, which at the time of making this video is still available for free. Uh, this one works a little bit different than the Lufticus does, whereas it has a high air band and a mid air band. So basically it's affecting the extreme highs and the high upper mids. Uh, the two controls can be linked together to work in tandem uh, and has a trim knob as well. Again, as with the Lufticus, this can get a little harsh if you push this too hard. But if you're looking to add some high end sheen and air to a mix or a specific track, this is an incredibly good option to have available. A few other interesting options to have on hand are the EQ1A by Mellow Muse. Uh, this is more or less a Neve-ish style EQ. Uh, has a low shelf, assignable low shelf, a low pass, two mid bands, and a high band shelf with an out with an output control. Uh, it is kind of Neve-ish. I'm not going to say that it's definitely, it's absolutely a Neve emulation, but it's kind of in the neighborhood. Uh, LVC Audio is known for making some very quirky and interesting kind of EQs, and their toned EQ is a pretty interesting one. They call this a mastering EQ. 
Uh, this has an input gain, output gain with a drive control up here, and you can switch it between either three band or two band. And what this works is it's a, it's a, it has a low and a high frequency selection. So you basically pick where the crossovers are and you can boost the lows, the mids and the highs boost or cut. It also then has a high pass frequency available here, high Q, high, high frequency roll off. You can go left, right, or mid side. Uh, there's a mix knob, feedback knob that does some interesting things and a scale knob for the, for the, uh, for the meters. Uh, again, pretty quirky, but if you're looking to do some weird or interesting things to attract, this could be a pretty good option to do something that you've never tried before. Uh, the last one is Audio Things Blindfold EQ, and this is a good like exercise EQ for you because this one does not tell you what frequency you're adjusting or how wide or narrow your cue is or how much gain or boost you're adding. It has a low frequency, low mid, high mid, and a high frequency and a master output with a soft clip saturation control and an analog control. Uh, this one like I said, it's a good for exercising. If you find yourself, you keep on basically zoning in on the same frequencies to adjust in and out. This is a pretty good one to just stick on a mix or a track and just play with until you get a good sound without zoning in on what frequencies you're actually adjusting. All three of these are an interesting and, and useful addition to whatever toolbox that you're using in your DAW. Okay, guys, thank you for checking out this video. I hope you find all of this stuff helpful. Uh, if you're enjoying what I'm doing on my channel, I would appreciate it if you would consider possibly subscribing uh, and checking back again for more videos down the road. Thanks. Take care.